Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome to another practical chess position. This one is wait to move. So, you should pause your video, uh, try to think about what you do here. It's from uh, Excelling at Positional Chess again. But figure out what you do, and then when you're done, unpause it, and we'll try to figure it out together. Alright, I mean, my, my gut instinct is, of course, to play d5. <laughs> um, d5, pawn takes, pawn takes. If knight takes, should somehow be bad. Maybe just rook d1. Or maybe queen e4, I don't know. You can go f5 after queen e4. Or, or g6. But it just feels good. Uh, second option is d5, pawn takes, pawn takes, queen takes. Then we can, we can take on h7. e7, sorry. But we could also take on h7 and then e7. I don't know. It doesn't look like so amazing. Bishop g5 is another idea. Pawn takes pawn, then we can take on f6 and go queen e4. Maybe bishop g5. But then if he goes bishop b7, what do we do? I don't know. Hold on. Hold on to your horses, folks. I don't know about d5 anymore. Because d5, pawn takes, pawn takes. What about just like bishop b7? I mean, still, like, I guess we can go rook e1, maybe? I don't know. Get some, get some nice play. But, I don't know. Bishop, G, bishop g5, bishop b7. Rook a to d1. I mean, I'm sure in a game I'd probably just go bishop to g5 here. But let, let's look a little further, let's look a little closer. I mean, another strange possibility is to just play bishop e4, but that looks so stupid. Like knight takes, queen takes, bishop a6, d5. That is stupid. Or rook d1, sorry, not d5. Um, just doesn't feel right to give up two bishops, but maybe it's okay. Maybe it's okay, actually. It's a very strange move. To just give up your bishop like that. Hmm. I don't know what the right answer is, man. I mean, bishop e4 is interesting. I would have to... Well, I'll, show, I'll make the moves. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. Well, I could have played rook b8 last week. Rook b8, bishop f4, it's like... You gotta at least admit it's somewhat annoying. I mean, I can take this probably and it wins with rook d1 coming. So, like bishop a6, or bishop d7 is also playable but looks clunky. And now I was thinking, oh, rook d1, he can go uh, bishop takes c4. If d5, there's a pin. Knight e5 is playable. The idea of knight c6, it's just all like a little weird though. Queen takes d4. I don't quite buy it. If um if d5 I just didn't I didn't quite know what to do after I don't know, maybe just bishop here. I just didn't quite know how to follow up. And yeah, we have open lines always and it's gonna be like some some initiative. Like after a move like this. It's, we definitely have some initiative here. I don't know quite how much, but we got something. But you know, it's risky to play that move. But bishop g5, bishop b7, it's like... Tough to see where the edge lies. I mean, like bishop g5, bishop b7, rook a d1, queen c7. It's starting to like unravel its pieces. Still seems okay for white, but the bishop on b7 is pretty strong. So let me look at d5 one more time. d5, pawn takes, pawn takes. Bishop b7 somehow, I feel like it's, we're going to have some disruptive move. Um, if he takes on d5 with the queen... Rook d1, maybe? Rook d1 should be good there, actually. Because we're attacking the, the bishop on e7 also. Well, no, he has queen e6. 
Oh, sorry. <laughs> I just don't. I don't know the answer. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna go bishop g5. Although I'm pretty sure it's not the right answer. It's just too. It's too pass. Too normal of a move. Let's see what they're looking for. What the hell is he even talking about? Bishop f4. So this is the idea. Is just uh, what the hell is this crazy crap? He gives like a 17 paragraph explanation. White needs to develop the three remaining pieces. Black also needs to develop three pieces. First, we should try to figure out where the rooks belong. In the game, Gelfand insists that the best posts are a1 and d1, which seems odd to me. I think the right squares are d1 and e1, in view of the open files. What the hell is he talking about? The main question is what should he do with the dark square bishop? Uh, on g5, the bishop is well placed, but black has no issues in the center, so we'll be able to go knight to d7. The second action for the bishop is b2, but b2 to b3 slightly damages white's pawn structure as it weakens the dark squares, whatever. It doesn't seem true. Um, Gelfand discovered that e5 is the Christmas square. What that means, like, the square you really want to go to. However, I have my doubts about his move. What the hell is he talking about? Basically, he wants to go bishop f4. And not bishop g5. So, like, rook d1 was played. And then bishop to f4. Um, and then bishop to e5. Yeah, it looks nice. You gotta be honest, the, the bishop looks nice here. So he's saying that if bishop g5 at some point, black would go knight d7 and just, just get more trades. Um, I don't know, maybe. You know what, Houdini likes bishop f4 though. Let's see why. Uh, so I'm doing it off screen because Houdini doesn't work on, on my engine, but this is You know, here's the reason, actually. It's a little more... It makes more sense. Bishop g5 is not good because of this. Bishop g5 is... I'm, I mean, no. Bishop g5 is not inferior because of this move. The key is how is black developing his pieces. I don't think he mentioned this idea. Okay, I guess he does. Sort of. Uh, the main thing is the queen belongs in c7. That's the main idea. So bishop f4 stops the development, the, the obvious development square for black's queen. And after pawn takes pawn, rook a to d1. And it's just this queen has nowhere good to go. So I think that's the key. It's a very, very difficult puzzle, of course. Um, but the key is not just developing normally, but thinking about your opponent's development too. And when you think about it in those uh, terms, I really start to like this move, bishop to f4, because Queen c7 is such a natural, normal place for the queen, and it connects the rooks, and there's no other good square for it to go. Queen d7 is on the open file still. So basically, a development move like this, and you have to realize that you're not going to be able to lose, he's not going to be able to hold on to this pawn. I mean, you're going to you're gonna get it back, because you're threatening to just take, due to a discovered discovery on, on h7, if he captures with everything. So a cool puzzle from Gelfand versus Lubojevic. Uh, thanks guys for watching, and and I definitely I agree that Bishop F4 is a good idea. It's too deep for me, man. Uh, see you guys later. Bye bye.